Oh, here comes the new student I've been expecting. Hey, you haven't read the lab manual, have you? I can tell. Your clothes are all wrong. Your shirt is unbuttoned and way too baggy. Your shorts don't protect your legs completely. Your necktie could get caught in machinery and you're not wearing closed-toed shoes. Your hair is short, so you don't need to tie it back like you would if it was long. However, your cell phone is too much of a distraction. Go ahead and turn it off. Thank you. Now you may enter the lab. Hang on a second. Before I let you do anything in the lab, you need to change your clothes. Much better. Now your shirt isn't loose and baggy. Your jeans cover your legs. You don't have any loose jewelry or clothing that can get caught in machinery. And your shoes protect your feet from falling objects and spilled liquids. Now let's review the emergency procedures and equipment. First let's find the emergency exit. Very good. If it's not safe to exit through the main door, you may exit through this door to safety. You should also know the locations of the fire extinguisher and the lab phone. Your instructor will show you where the fire blanket, first aid kit, and eye wash are located as well. Before attempting an experiment, make sure you read the lab manual thoroughly. It has important information about how to perform the experiment safely. Your instructor should inform you how to shut down the equipment in case of an emergency, and be sure to ask if you have any questions about how to operate the equipment. Make sure you inspect the lab equipment for any unsafe conditions before you start. If you notice anything that looks suspicious, inform your instructor. Dangerous conditions can develop suddenly while the experiment is running, too. Be alert to anything that could indicate a problem, such as strange noises, pressure readings, temperature readings, vibrations, or the presence of smoke or flames. If you notice anything odd, shut down the equipment and inform your instructor immediately. Conduct the experiment only as described in the lab manual. Once the experiment is over, shut down the equipment in a safe manner and wipe down your work area. This experiment is now ready for other students to use. If a small fire occurs in the lab and your personal safety is not threatened, inform your instructor and calmly retrieve the fire extinguisher to put it out. If the fire becomes too large or is endangering your personal safety, calmly evacuate the lab, close the door, dial 911, and activate the building's fire alarm. Injuries in the lab are always a serious matter. Be sure to report any injuries to your instructor, no matter how slight. If the injury is serious, inform your instructor and dial 911. In California, earthquakes are a very real threat. In the event of an earthquake in the lab, quickly stop what you are doing and duck and cover beneath a table or other sturdy structure. Once the shaking stops, calmly evacuate the building to safety. Spills are common in the fluids lab and you should be on the lookout for them at all times. 
In the event of a spill, notify your instructor. We'll help you clean it up safely. Some experiments may use petroleum products, which are flammable. These liquids will be handled by the instructor and should be safely stored in the flammable substance locker when not in use. Never stand in the plane of rotation of a rotating coupling such as between a motor and a pump. If the coupling fails, it can send metal fragments radially at high speeds. Stand off to the side a safe distance away from any coupling. If you work with a hazardous substance that can splash or get in your eyes, safety goggles will be required. No equipment should ever be operated when you are alone. Always operate equipment with at least one other person assisting you. Additionally, no equipment should be operated without your instructor's knowledge and approval. Do not eat, drink, or smoke at any time inside the lab. To ensure the safety of yourself and others, always maintain a professional attitude in the lab.